U.S. President Joe Biden is making his first visit to Canada. First up on his agenda, a meeting with the Governor General, then over to Prime Minister Justin Trudeau's residence for an informal meeting. Joining us now for more insight on what Biden and Trudeau may hope to accomplish during the visit is Bruce Heyman, former U.S. Ambassador to Canada. Thanks so much for joining us today, Bruce. Good to be back with you. And and you're also in Ottawa, where these leaders will I be uh, brushing shoulders and meeting. I, I wonder, uh, you know, just how important you think this meeting between Biden and, and Trudeau is going to be? I think it's incredibly important. And never underestimate the importance of having the U.S. president come visit a world leader. But when you visit your best friend, your great ally, your neighbor, your best trading partner, um, and use it as an opportunity to affirm your friendship and relationship, it's incredibly important. Why do you think it took him so long to come, though, Bruce? So let, let's just keep it in perspective. You remember he was here in town uh, in 2016 as vice president. Mm -hmm. And then during his race and when he was elected, the first call was with Prime Minister Trudeau, first world call. First world call after he was uh, sworn in was Prime Minister Trudeau. First bilateral meeting, virtually, because it was COVID, that's what we were all doing, mm -hmm. uh, was with the Canadians. And so I don't think it's taken as long as people think. I mean, you know, the normal course of things, the two men have seen each other quite a bit. And it took some time to plan this out, but it's a substantive, really high quality, you know, two nights, a full day, and a lot's going to get accomplished, I think, over the next 24 hours. So I'm curious what, what you think could get accomplished in, in this meeting. There, there is a bit of a, um, a, you know, issue hanging over Prime Minister Trudeau right now when it comes to the allegations of, of Chinese interference in the elections mm. here. Uh, how do you think that might affect their conversations? So think about the week. I mean, you have, uh, you know, um, President Xi meeting with President Putin. Mm -hmm. You have President Biden meeting with Prime Minister Trudeau. The juxtaposition of these two meetings demonstrates the extremes that we're experiencing. One's at war, trying to take over another country. One's developing that kind of relationship here. One's promoting democracy and um, you know the rights of voters and free speech and, and, and the like. So. I think it's going to be very important, but I think those two countries on the first part of the week, they're going to be a big part of the conversation mm. of the last part of the week with these two men. Yeah. How, how concerned should Canadians be about the former meeting between Xi and, and Putin? I think we should all be concerned, not just Canadians, but people who care about, you know, democracy versus aut autocracies. We should all be concerned about what's taking place, um, because if we allow them to team together and take over Ukraine or encroach on other parts of the world, um, that only diminishes the role of democracy in the world. And I think it becomes more and more threatened. So, you know, I think we're going to look at that very carefully. We're also going to look at, you know, where we produce goods together and how we think about that going forward, whether it's dealing with the region, North America, friend shoring, how we make things and build things together. I think it's going to be a climate change. We're going to focus on that as well. Um, there are going to be a lot of things to talk about. Roxham Road and migration and mm -hmm. the issues around, you know, safe third country. There will be a lot of things that will be talked about. I look at this day, I call it S and S, social, and serious. And it's going to be a combination of both, yeah, social I'm, and serious, for, for 24 hours. And are, you know, both important when it comes to a, a relationship like this? Yeah. Yeah, very much. And you shouldn't underestimate the importance of the social aspect. Um, but the serious stuff is going to get tackled as well. Mm -hmm. And so it gives you a platform for both countries to express to each other very directly and formally that here are the things on our mind. 
let's work together and deal with it. And that's on both sides. With a meeting like this, Bruce, do we actually hear something coming out of it, you know, other than we had a good time talking and, you know, think we're, we're, we have a relationship together, that sort of thing? Do we actually hear something, you know, substantial, tangible come out of this? Or does this sort of just sort, uh, you know, set the, the stage for that to come down the road, do you think? I, I anticipate that there will be something substantive coming out of this. I don't know exactly what it is, but given my experience, at least in the Obama administration, we would very clearly say that the, the nice part is nice, but the serious stuff, we need to get stuff done. And we would work for weeks trying to figure out where we can find agreement to get stuff done. There's a whole laundry list of things that both the prime minister and the president will want help on from each other. And my guess is that it isn't just new news coming into this meeting, that there are agreements that have been reached or very close to finalizing, and they will be announced sometime, hopefully, over the next two days. Bruce, I just want to come back to the trade uh, subject that you mentioned, because there has been criticism that the U.S. has become more protectionist, especially with its Inflation Reduction Act and those incentives that mm. Um, you know, would encourage manufacturing in the U.S. and whatnot. How do you view uh, the U.S. and its stance on, on free trade right now? So let's just go back just a, a tad bit to the beginning of COVID when we woke up and understood that we didn't have access to ventilators and didn't make them ourselves and needed them to keep people alive that we didn't have access to a lot of PPP, which was manufactured away. And then we absolutely saw our supply chains get disrupted and realized that we didn't have control over some critical components in our supply chain, namely semiconductors and other things. And so that was quickly realized in the country, like we've got a problem here. We're not making this stuff here at home and what are we gonna do about it? And we allocated a fair bit of money um, from Congress to focus on rebuilding our capabilities in so many areas domestically. And so that you're using U.S. taxpayer money to rebuild that and rebuild those capabilities and the political movement afoot within the United States, both parties, is very much in support of this. And so that's the trend. Now, that all being said, Canada says, hey, we're here. We've made things together. We do things together. We build things together. What's good for uh, both of us is good for each other. And so there, there was considerable work done, and kudos to the Trudeau government, who highlighted this on electric vehicles mm -hmm. and the Inflation Reduction Act, which had a substantive change in the language of that act. And I think the ambassador here was very correct in saying, don't get excited yet. This isn't law. It hasn't been done yet. It's not fully baked. And uh, so I think there's a recognition we're going to do a lot of things together. But people need to understand the political side of what's happening in the U.S. here and the momentum between uh, both parties. Uh, to do more of making things at home and having critical capabilities back at home that we don't have today.